Okay, jumping back to the lecture. So we're going to talk about some kind of skills-based things regarding layers before we kind of get into to combining images or doing some cool things. And so the next kind of task thing that we are going to cover is the idea of renaming your layers. Organization is key and layers help you stay organized and there's lots of ways that you can remain organized with the layers. You can rename them, you can group them, you can reposition them, etc. And so instead of calling that new layer that has the ice cream on it, um, layer two, or the squiggly pink line as, as layer one, I should be more descriptive of what's on it. This has the isolated ice cream cone, or this is the funky pink background. Whatever you want to call it, make sure that it's it's common sense to figure out what's on the layer. Having the layer uh, named layer one, layer two, layer three doesn't describe what's on the layer, and so it doesn't help you or anybody else who opens your file recognize what's on that layer without kind of clicking on it and turning layers on and off to kind of figure that out. And so you can rename layers simply by double clicking the name on the layer. And so the layer two in this example, I've double clicked on it and it highlights. And then I just typed ice cream cone and now it is the ice cream cone layer. And so when I jump back to Photoshop after a few slides, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my layers to be something that I'll remember. You can also color label your layers. So um, you can decide how this may or may not work for you. Um, but in InDesign in particular, you might have lots of layers because you have lots of pages in your document. And what I like to do is I basically like to say this page is good to go or this layer is good to go or I'm still editing or this one has a big problem on it. And so you could kind of color label things when they're done. You could make it green and say it has a green thumbs up. It's good to go. Nothing else needs to be done for it. Or you could put like orange, caution, I'm still working on that layer, don't change anything, maybe you're working with a team. Or you could put red if something's really wrong. And you can figure out what those labels mean for you. You could even be working in a team. Maybe you're given a group project for your class and everybody has to do something for the project and you're sharing this file back and forth. If I'm working on layers one, two, and three, maybe I color them purple. And purple represents Jessica. And do not touch the purple layers because that's what Jessica's working on. And maybe there's a guy named Mike in the project. And he is working on uh, layers four, five, and six, whatever they're labeled. Um, but he color labels them blue. And nobody touches the blue one except for Mike because that's the those are the layers Mike are working on. And so you can use this to further um, organize your project. Again, kind of translating this for other projects, what you could do, uh, maybe you're an illustrator and you're doing a stationary set and you could say all the background imagery I've labeled green and all of the the logo layers and different things I've labeled orange and you can kind of organize your workspace that way as well. It's kind of an optional thing that I'm visual so I like to organize in that way even if you're just like this one's green because that's the one I'm currently working on. It allows you to quickly see which layer um, you're editing and which layers you're not currently editing. You can also restack and you can group layers. And so in the previous video, I've already showed you how to drag and drop layers, and I'll show you that again. But all you have to do to reposition layers, keeping in mind that the further up on the layers panel they are, the further to the top, the more visible they're going to be. And so you may have to drag layers up and down so you can see the content that you'd like to see. Um, uh, you can just drag and drop them. And so it doesn't matter what version of Photoshop you're in or InDesign or Illustrator for that matter, if you drag and drop them, you're gonna get some sort of horizontal visual that's showing you where the layer is going to be dropped. In older versions, you might have like a big blue bar. I've represented that by a big yellow bar. Um, in newer versions of the software, you get an actual visual where the layer actually kind of pops into place and you can see where it's going to fall. And so it's super easy to reposition them. The only layer that you cannot reposition is the background layer. It will always be on the bottom. Um, last but not least, if you have a lot of layers, let's say that you're starting to work with 5, 10, 15 layers for whatever reason or purpose you need them for, and you find that there's just too many layers, but chunks of layers have something in common. Maybe layers 1, 2, and 3 in my example here all have text on them. I could group them and I could call the grouping text. And then whenever I have to modify text, I expand the grouping and I see all the layers. But I could collapse them so I don't have to see 45 text layers all at one time. To do that, you need to select any layers you'd like to group, and they have to be touching. You couldn't grab ice cream, cone, layer two, and background and say those are a group because they have to be next to each other because they have to fall into sequence on your layers panel. And so first you want to drag them and drop them in the order and the placement you want them to be. 
And then if you select the first one and you hit shift and you select the last one, it will highlight all the layers in between. And you can hit the little folder in the bottom right hand corner of the layers panel and we'll create a grouping. And that icon you'll see over and over again. And whenever you do that, it's going to create a grouping. It's going to create a grouping of actions, a grouping of swatches, a grouping of styles or things like that. When you do that, it'll create a new group and you can rename it just like you would do a layer. You can double click on it. And in this case, I named it new group. That's not a good name, but I did it for the example. If it, they were all text based layers, I would say text. And so anytime I need to edit the text, I would expand that little drop down. There's a little arrow here and I would uh, edit the text and then I would collapse or I'd close the, the grouping again. And so quickly, let's jump over to Photoshop and let's do those three things. So let's rename layers, let's color label layers, and let's restack and group layers. I guess it's four things, but we've already covered the restacking. And so if I come back to my example here, I still want to do some editing. I don't like the rough outline of the, um, the ice cream cone, but that's not what we're tackling right now. We want to remain organized throughout our process. And so what I want to do is I want to rename my layers to be something specific that I'll remember. And so if you double click the layer, you can rename it. I'm going to call this ice cream cone. I'll call it pink lines for the background. And then the background I think that I could leave as background copy because I know that I'm not editing the background. I couldn't, it's locked. So, so I, I would still use that as my background. You can color label the layers as well. And so let's say that I am 100% done with the background. Um, if I right click on a layer at the bottom of this fly out menu, you can change the color. And so let's say the background is done and the pink swiggles are done and I'm not touching them anymore. I could label them and I could color them. And now I could say, okay, well, I'm not going to touch the ones that are green because they've got a green thumbs up and they're good to go. And again, you could color label them for whatever reason that you could think of. Um, all you have to do is right click and then you can choose a colored label. You can also reposition any group layers. And so what we can do is if the pink lines should be in front of the ice cream cone, we can drag and drop that and then it would sit in front. Maybe I want to do that. Maybe I'm going to come back with the eraser tool, which I never use the eraser tool. I use um, usually use like masks or something to erase parts of the image. Um, but I could come back with the eraser tool. Maybe it has like a real soft edge to it. And I could kind of erase the parts of the ice cream cone I want to see. So that would be a reason to reposition the layers. Now it kind of looks like, um, kind of reminds me of the grease in the beauty school dropout section where everything's kind of fuzzy and hazy. And you can come back and basically what you're doing is you're creating a hole in the image that you created. Now I don't want to do that. I think there's other options for this. So I would hit undo if that's not what I wanted. But I'll leave it there for now for this example. Then last but not least, you can group things together. And so if the ice cream cone and the pink lines should always be viewed together on there, they basically go hand in hand because there's a hole, an ice cream cone shaped hole in the middle of the ice cream cone. You can select groups of layers or a series of layers. So I selected the first one, I just clicked on it. And then I held shift and I clicked on the last one. This one happens to have two, but you could actually click the first one and then click as many down as you want. And um, all the layers in between your first click and your second click will be highlighted. But with at least two layers selected, you can select the create new layer group option and it will put it in a little grouping. You can double click to rename it. So maybe this is just ice cream cone because it's the combination of the ice cream cone in the background. Um, and if you were to expand it, there's a little arrow, you'll see that you have multiple layers inside. But I could quickly collapse that if I had a text layer and an ice cream cone combo layer here as a grouping and then the background layer.